Welcome, everyone. My name is Vandana, and I am the founder and creatrix of Vandana Life Healing and Galactic Life Healing. Welcome to the New Earth Ascension Show. We are being hosted uh, by the beautiful, lovely, my lovely star sister, Loren Gailey, on the New Earth One Network, which is a growing flourishing community of 5D light workers, teachers, healers, visionaries, and speakers who are here to awaken all of humanity. Uh, the sole mission of this show, the New Earth Ascension Show, is to really give a voice, give, uh, offer a platform for all of these very gifted, talented speakers, teachers, healers, writers, these beautiful light workers who have something to say. They have a gift that they'd like to share to empower and inspire all of us who are really going through the thick of this pandemic timeline, this pause and reset timeline, to give people conscious tools to really reauthor and rewrite their own lives, right? To kind of be offered a new insight, a, a greater vision for the rest of their lives and their journeys. This is also an opportunity and a platform for speakers um, and um, teachers, healers, way showers, paradigm shifters, who haven't really necessarily been in the public eye much, who tend to work their magic behind the scenes. And I wanted to offer and support these my fellow brothers and sisters of the light, you know, this light family who might not necessarily have this opportunity to reach so many people on the planet. So imagine if all, everyone on the planet received this soul medicine and this encouragement, this empowerment, this awareness. Um, imagine how bright the light of Gaia would shine and how much happier and healthier the planet would be as a whole. And we could all together step into this journey of enlightenment and ascension evolution. This is a, a great period of a rapid expansion, awakening, transformation. And today, my special guest is going to share her unique awakening magic. So welcome everyone and welcome Susan Mason. Thank you so much for being on the show with me today. Thank you for being here. Thank you for having me. I'm greatly appreciative. Thank you. And your website is to start out, which is very in sync and uh, in alignment with the topic for today's show. This, this theme today feels like it's about magical explorations and transformations. And your website is actually magicallifeinstitute.com. So we'll start right there. And I'm so excited to dive right in and just to have like a really, you know, kind of quantum conversation, intimate impromptu and just you know i welcome everyone to join our chat you know our our coffee clutch right and you even have a coffee table book right that we'll talk about in a moment but let's start out with just introducing you susan to our listeners whoever's listening now and to the replay in the future is that okay susan absolutely okay so your full name is actually susan mason apps is that correct yes not the Good. technology a name. <laughs> not the <laughs> app not the autopilot program that I, <laughs> that I clear and uninstall in my my healing calls but okay so um susan everyone is a scientist a healer and a visionary the founder of the Magical Life Institute and the creator of the Inner Journey Alchemy Process. And her unique expertise synthesizes her diverse backgrounds in science, energy, and spirituality. So important. I'm so happy to, um, to even read these words that, you know, this is um, um, an all-inclusive, uh, integrated, um, uh, unified timeline where all of these different sciences or spirituality and science are coming together are mixing marrying and merging as one right so this is um, mm, so all of the sciences are coming together to create a deeper and greater 
inner standing of how this universe actually works <laughs> and what's actually going on behind the scenes. So we're mixing science, energy, and spirituality. So it's not one or the other, but it's everything, right, in combination with each other. So that makes a lot more sense to me. So let's continue. Uh, Susan is also passionate about living a conscious lifestyle of personal responsibility that reestablishes the natural order of our world and really honors the truth of who we really are. With her nurturing heart, her creatively analytical mind, and her desire to serve others, to be of service. That's what we're here for, right? Mm -hmm. Susan guides men, women, and children of all ages uh, who are facing challenging life or, and or health situations, health challenges, any kind of challenges, uh, who are ready, willing, and able to experience, to dive deep into this inner transformation to grow, to heal, to expand into the wholeness of their true self, their true identity. Susan received her bachelor's and master's of science degrees from the University of Toronto, love Toronto, uh, in 1986 and 1989, respectively. She was later employed as a forensic scientist for nearly 10 years. That's amazing. Uh, you are the first forensic scientist that I've had on my show on the New Earth Ascension show, so welcome. All are welcome here um, in this refuge, right? The sanctuary, safe sanctuary, the safe place and space to just kind of let go of what you thought you knew and what we're now inviting you to step into. Uh, so she's a scientist and a deeply spiritual being, forensic biologist. Woo. Uh, Susan saw many aspects of humanity that were deeply traumatizing and yeah the stress of that uh, world left her just really questioning how and why we live the lives that we do um it also left her kind of dealing with an, her own autoimmune disorder so you know just because we're um uh, ascending evolving expanding into this 5D reality and galaxy doesn't mean that ascension means that we are, uh, you know, necessarily are perfected or enlightened while we're in these bodies. So with this uh, autoimmune disorder, migraines, chronic pains, eventually the connection between how she felt physically, right, emotionally, mentally, so the mind-body schematics, the somatics, um, and how she was living her life, she just couldn't ignore that anymore. And I think that many of you are experiencing and can relate, and this deeply resonates with so many of you who are listening right now. So Susan began a journey to discover who she was, what she wanted, and how she had really shut herself down. And finally realized that she was more than she had ever dreamed of. She has approached her life as, as an experiment you know, scientific experiment, right? And learn how to step out of that status quo and living into that for herself, stepping into her true identity, embodying that, her authenticity, really brought her to the next level of her own evolutionary process where she finally was able to feel, you know, comfortable and confident to share her gifts with others who also have been longing to also, uh, you know, embody their true selves, their true identities as well. So Susan began her study of energetic healing modalities way back in 1998, and she is now a quantum biofeedback specialist. I'd love to hear more about that. A Reiki master as I am, a crystal therapist, beautiful, spiritual health coach, really important and a certified divine navigation coach, divine navigation coach. Got to ask you about that one too. So she wears many hats, hats as, as we all do, but she wears them well. <laughs> and she's been offering healing and coaching services since 2002. So Susan, welcome so much to today's New Earth Ascension gathering. Thank you for being here again. Thank you. Where that, do we start? That was, 
<laughs> that was fun to listen to. <laughs> yeah, right? Well, it was fun for me to, to really tap into the energetics of your, your soul dynamics, um, your soul psychology, um, and biology, of course, because you are a biologist and a forensic scientist. Why don't we just start out there? Like, um, maybe what um, led you into the field of um, forensic science and biology? And then uh, when you found out that that was one of your first loves and it really felt authentic for you and helpful and beneficial to many out there, um, how did you interweave that or combine, integrate that with, spirit, with the, the field of spirituality or healing uh, right. modality? Yeah. Well, I think I've always been empathic, but I didn't know that until well into my 30s. Mm -hmm. And it's quite interesting. I was introduced to biology because my stepfather was a biologist and there were books lying around the house. And I started to read and I started to ask questions and it just fascinated me. And then I realized at some point that biology is actually the study of life. And I wanted to know about life because throughout my childhood, I had a lot of unusual experiences that I don't think I really shared with the adults around me because, you know, maybe at some point I did and got shut down, but I was just fascinated by life and um, went on through school. And it was interesting, you know, when I started university, I didn't know, do I want to be a biologist? Do I want to go into history? Because I, you know, English, what is it? And went through that first year of university and I was, I just had the bug. I just wanted to learn more and more and more. And I was that geek in high school who sat in the library asking my biology teacher questions during my spare. <laughs> it was so strange. And I recognized that it was strange. But um, when I was a kid through the, you know, 70s, do you remember the show Quincy? He was sadly, I do. So. <laughs> I do remember that show. I don't think I was an avid watcher of that show well, or necessarily I a was, fan, but I was captivated by it. Right. And um, Quincy was a coroner and, you know, an investigator as well. And he would pick up cigarette butts at the crime scene and do all these things. <laughs> and I was like, whoa, that's the coolest thing ever. <laughs> And so when an opportunity to apply for a job came, you know, in forensic science, it's like, yeah, that's, that's my job. <laughs> yeah. and, and I loved it. I loved all of it. And I didn't understand about energy that time. So I didn't know that when I was sitting, working, examining the clothing of a murder victim or a sexual assault victim or a suspect. I didn't know that there was energy associated with that. I didn't understand, although I often in my later years was wearing a crystal necklace and I wore that thing all day, all night. Of course the, you did. Of course. Yeah. I was just going to add, and I'm sorry, I don't mean to interject, but yeah. you know, just, consciously you didn't understand or have like um, a framework or a reference point yeah. for energy. But of course we That's are funny. made of energy. And so exactly. the, the crystal necklace and all of that um, led you to, you know, who you are today. But yes, please continue. This is fascinating. So, so you know, here I was through school um learning about the study of life from a scientific perspective mm -hmm. and then i you know as a forensic biologist using all the science but wow talk about a study of life 
you know, the dark side of life and the tragic side of life and the, the part of life that some people view as entertainment. And I was realizing this is real. Like there are real people here and it's not television and this is not entertainment. And um, it was just really difficult after a while to digest it. And towards the end of my time there, I started to wake up. And I started reading Shirley MacLaine and I was reading Shakti Gawain and, yes. you know, all, <laughs> <Me of> these, <laughs> all of these wonderful people. And at some point, I started to realize, like, what's going on? You know, and why? Why are we doing this? And what are the other ways to live? And I developed over my time there um, chronic pain, neck and back pain, migraines multiple times a week. I was going to the chiropractor Monday, Wednesday, and Friday just to survive. Um, and eventually ended up with an autoimmune disorder and, you know, thyroid issues. And um, I didn't have a clue what was going on. And when I left forensic science after the birth of my third child, um, it's when I really started to explore things and you know, became a Reiki master, started studying crystals, um, learned about meditation beyond what I had learned, you know, um, in years previous. And, and I started having experiences, you know, that were not explained in a science textbook. And I questioned a lot of what I was experiencing because I thought for sure I was crazy. Um, and I'm sure a lot of people out there can relate to that, you know, when you're hearing a voice or, you know, getting intuitions that are so strong, you can't ignore them. And, you know, that's at some point along the way, I kind of started testing this, whatever this was. And it's like, okay, so if I approach things this way, if I have this belief and this attitude, what's going to happen? And I would just start to notice and watch. And that really assisted me to pursue things. Um, and it's funny, one of the first sort of channeled messages that I brought through was all about quantum science and quantum physics and equations. And I had never heard of quantum physics at this point. I think this was in like 2000, 2001. And wow. well, it would have been 2001, end of 2001, 2002. And, and I, I wrote this whole message and I thought, wow, that's pretty cool. I don't understand. And it was a matter of weeks later that I was introduced to this quantum biofeedback machine <laughs> in my doctor's please, office. Please share more about and that I was, and about your unusual experiences before I forget to ask you that. Because you mentioned as a child, you had unusual experiences and then maybe as an adult too, but I guess I, I'm just like so curious minded being a Gemini girl you know, <laughs> well, about, I'm a Libra, so I've got the yeah, we get along, we get along. Thank you. You yeah. have to balance me out a bit. Um, but yeah, uh, I'd love to know more about the unusual experiences, be just because also I feel like it would be helpful and useful for a lot of people to not feel so isolated or weird or different from the rest of the planet. So that, you know, people have a reference point or just like a comparison to make and say, okay, well, if this very qualified, intelligent scientist <laughs> woman, you know, if she has unusual experiences, then I guess I'm okay. I'm in good company. So, yeah. Thank you. Um, yeah, you know, I think when I was really young, I 
communicated with flowers and trees. And there was at one point, I think I was about seven, and I went in behind this cedar hedge. It was between a fence and the hedge, and I went in there. And I think that was my first experience speaking with elementals and seeing them. And uh, I don't remember if I mentioned it to my mother. I must have at some point, or I just knew this was weird and this was crazy. Um, and then, you know, I had an imaginary friend who didn't seem to me to be imaginary at all, but I understood that the adults around me labeled it that. Um, and I received all kinds of incredible information from this being. Many years later, I had an experience um, where this being showed up again. And it was during a rebirthing experience. And I was wherever I was before I came into this life. And my, my star family, because we were definitely in the stars, my star family was gathered around prior to me leaving to come to this world. And there was this being standing at the front. And in that moment, I looked at him and went, oh my God, you're my imaginary friend. But he was my father. And the first thing that happened to me when I had that recognition the first thing that came into my mind was, oh my God, I wasn't abandoned here. You actually came to check on me. And that is so beautiful, Susan. I'm about to cry it, right now. <laughs> but well, in a good way, like tears of that, joy and remembrance. Like, <clears throat> that's beautiful. Please continue. Well, and so, you know, there were about 30 beings gathered around and then I got into my pod. Well, it's the closest thing I can relate it to. And I traveled here. And then all of a sudden I was in the birth canal and I was born. And then in that moment, I saw everything. I was everything. Um, I knew everything, I, I was everything. I got the joke of life and the seriousness of life. And when I came out of that experience, I, I haven't been the same person since. And I have questioned everything as a result of that. Because when you have that, I mean, that was a profound, found experience my body physically changed as a result and um how did your body change just <clears throat> um during the process i lost i i released i don't know buckets <laughs> maybe buckets is an exaggeration but a lot of mucus came out of my body like it was just and I was constantly grabbing Kleenexes. So I was in this meditative state, but still very, very present. And the pain that was released from my body afterwards was profound. Um, hip problems, neck problems um, released a lot in that moment. And, you know, you can't, you can't argue with those things, you know? Um, my scientific mind would step in in moments like that and say, oh my God, you need to check into the loony bin. And then I'd be like, well, no, I actually experienced that. And, you know, so over the years, I've, you know, at different times shared these things and I've written about it in the book, 
that yes you just read my mind which i know is <laughs> one of your gifts and mine and all of our we all have the natural ability and capacity yeah. we're all psychic telepathic and intuitive um please um share also about the book but i just wanted to say like congratulations congratulations for sh for allowing yourself to be that vulnerable with yourself and with others and really being kind and gentle with yourself and really like paying attention to the signs along the way from your star tribes and and trusting that you know that there, that you're fine that there is nothing wrong with you just you know just allowing and accepting your your divinity your your star well, identity and heritage yeah and that's i mean that's been a journey right you have those peak experience moments yeah they transform you in the moment and for the next few weeks or months but then they can fade right and um you know then i i later of course had more experiences that really took me even deeper and then giving myself the permission to really start to not judge, not discount, to learn to be vulnerable with myself and start to connect to those limiting beliefs that, you know, I, like all of us, have been programmed with in our life and learning to feel again. Because when you're sitting looking at photos from a triple homicide, you don't want to feel that. No, so you kind of and, have to naturally self-protect and block those and I wasn't difficult emotions. Yeah, I wasn't even aware of all of that. So it's been a long journey. And I mean, I'm still on it like the rest of us are. And, um, yeah. and I've come to recognize that, you know, perhaps I have things to share. <laughs> well, you definitely have things to share. So it's like you've almost really like so, um, uh, what's the word, elegantly uh, integrated left and right brain wave activity, uh, top, bottom, front, back of the brain, right? <laughs> and so um, you have kind of figured out or have been uh, advised uh, or instructed, downloaded on how to do this with your clients. What I'm very interested and curious uh, about before we get into your book, which is such a blessing in itself, but how do you find that um, this is helpful or different from other, from just Reiki alone or just, you know, working with crystals and chakras um, because of your background, because of your history with the sciences. Right. Um, well, I think that I have a unique perspective that I've developed through the years that really does integrate my science and energetic experiences with my, with life you know it just brings that all together and um and i think that in the asking of questions for myself it has from both a left brain and a right brain a 3d and a 5d um perspective i think when i bring that to clients there's I think one of my superpowers is creating a safe place for people to begin to ask those questions of themselves. And, you know, I share a lot of my own journey with clients, um, you know, the pieces that are relevant and really create the safe place for them to go, well, you know, I've been experiencing this too, you know, especially with kids, one of, you know, one of my really common questions would be, so do you ever like feel stuff? You know, you walk into a room or, you know, and you just know stuff. 
And, you know, the number of kids that I've spoken with that go, yeah, like I do. And then we go from there. And it's really a validation and it's about giving people the perspective of you're not broken, that everything really has happened for us. And, you know, even when you look at the painful stuff, and that's, I think that's something that I've really dug into in my own life is looking at the painful stuff, learning to feel the painful stuff, learning to recognize the gift in it and um, allowing myself to really access more of me, to accept more of me. So in the work that I do with clients, you know, that's really where we start, you know, and, and we go from there. And I mean, I have clients who aren't really spiritual all the way to, you know, people who are talking to star beings. So, um, it's a that, pretty big wide spectrum. It of is. People, but more and more of the people who, who used to be the doubters or the skeptics oh, yeah. <clears throat> are actually coming on board and right. I'm realizing like w with what's going on right now on the planet, this global awake mass awakening, um, that yeah there's something like what is the truth behind this and there's something really going on and all of a sudden i'm my senses are growing my right. my feeling and healing abilities are expanding i know things that i didn't seem to know before i'm being told things or i'm sensing or i'm seeing angels or guides and what is going on and so i feel like more and more which is a really positive thing for the planet um and, and I think necessary. So it's great exactly. that you have this background because I would imagine that people who do, do come from a more left uh, brain, logical, analytical perspective would kind of feel more comfortable sharing okay. these new awarenesses with you because of your history and well, your training and background, right? Yeah, it's funny because a lot of people when they come to me, we start in the very left brain place. And, and that's comfortable for them and it's comfortable for me. And then gradually, um, you know, with the various tools that I use, we end up, you know, I end up asking questions that get broader and broader and broader. And ultimately, um, many, many of my clients will end up saying, okay, you're like the only person I could talk to about this. Nobody else would get this. And it's like, yeah, I know, like, go. <laughs> you can't say anything that's going, at least so far, nobody said anything that has had me stand back and go, okay, that's just weird. <laughs> same, same here. I mean, I've had people, somebody said that to me recently who uh, was really into Mount Shasta and the uh, beings from Talos and she worked with a guy named Paul from Venus. So I'm not plugging him. I don't even know him, but when I heard the name, I was like, oh, cool. Somebody else would be like, all right, I think um, I'm good. <laughs> but I was just like intrigued. I'm like, I, I, lo I love Ven Venusians. I'm sure I have many lives there. Um, but she said to me, yeah, I just want to preface this by saying like, I'm having these weird experiences and I, Susan, I said the same thing to her as you just shared with me that you say to your clients, like, there isn't probably anything I haven't heard or witnessed uh, before. So just go for it. Just what, what's even, going on. Yeah. And even if I haven't heard or witnessed something, you know, my mind just pretty much expands because I'm a scientist and now I want to ask more questions about it. And, right. you know, so I think that's... Um, that's a lot of fun. And it is. And I'm sure that, that 
provides a sense of groundedness also, I would imagine, to your sessions. You're welcoming all information, all perspectives, all insights and awarenesses um, right. in an, a more interdimensional, from an interdimensional quantum perspective, yeah. um, which is really cool. So um, can you share, about, uh, share with us about your book? I'm excited to learn more about your book. Yeah. So this is the book. It's called Awakenings, Stories of Growth, Healing, and Magical Transformation. And it's a compilation book, uh, but a little bit different than most where the whole book is just chapters from different people. Half of the book has chapters from uh, my co-authors, and the other half of the book is me and my journey and my stories. And it's really, I mean, it was published last September and I really didn't realize um, how perfect it was to be around for this time because it offers stories that go from the full spectrum of awakening, you know, from awakening to how this relationship is detrimental to me and how I handed over my power to um, what's the meaning of life and gee, we're all connected to something and, you know, uh, stories about coming to terms with pollution and how we treat the earth and, you know, the evolution to awakening to recycling and reducing and, you know, the zero waste movement and racism and how that's impacted someone. I mean, you know, there's a really broad range of stories from my co-authors and, um, you know, just someone really writing about kindness and the gift of kindness and how it impacted her growing up. So it's, it's a really broad range. And then my stories really cover my journey of awakening and the various points in that journey. It goes through, you know, becoming a parent, having chronic illness, curing myself of chronic illness, um, you know, discovering my father in that other world. All of it is, is pretty much in there. And not, you know, it's not written from a perspective of, and this person did this horrible thing to me. It's really written from the perspective of how has my life served me and what are the insights? You know, I've never studied Buddhism. I was just about to add that that sounds like one of my Buddhist sutras. I am a Buddhist practitioner and I, okay. I uh, follow the Lotus Sutra. And that is one of the perspectives, one of the philosophies, one of the, the Dharma teachings of this practice. Well, it's funny because I started to encounter Buddhist teachings and it's like, wow, I wrote that in my journal about three weeks ago, you know, or I said that in conversation to someone and they're like, whoa, that's really cool. <laughs> so I've found that really inspiring that those were awarenesses that arose from within me, not something that I necessarily took externally. So finding them externally, of course, provides the validation that I'm not crazy. And, you know, this is some, you know, the idea of being crazy is something that has really stayed with me through my life. Um, I've surrendered now to the fact that I'm not crazy. Um, and but there's a genius and a creativity with even with the definition i think the definition of the word has definitely been distorted over time oh. and you look at the original definitions and like the merriam webster is from like the early 1900s mm -hmm. you'll see the true meaning of the words and everything was definitely distorted and no pun intended whitewashed <laughs> uh, through colonization and systemic injustice and equality racism and all of that um, as a manipulative 
method of controlling the masses. Uh, so it, it's interesting, you know, what if that was a, a goodness and a strongness instead of a wrongness? So I always look at it from that question and that perspective. Yeah. Um, so yeah, what, what's right about being crazy? <laughs> to a point, to, to a point, in a balanced way. Yes. You know, if we look at the original definition of crazy, I'm sure it doesn't mean what it means today. Right. So, I, yeah. I think um, to be open to experience, you know, all the dimensions of reality um, yeah. mm -hmm. can ultimately lead you there or to questioning your sanity that way. Um, can I share a poem from the Please book? Please do, yeah. Okay, I'll put my eyeballs on. Um, it's called The Challenge. Once I sat upon a star, my mind was wide, it reached so far. Upon a wish, the spirit soared, the eagle flew and the lion roared. My arms outstretched and opened wide. I was clear, nothing left to hide. It felt safe at last in my skin, yet for so long I wondered where to begin. The journey to behold the all will challenge us to stand up tall. Are we free of the burdens of lives gone by, or shall we merely continue to try? It seems so simple to let it be, to open up and truly see each hurdle along the way, to teach a lesson and to say, Keep it simple, keep it love, fly free, be as the dove. Thank you, Susan. That was really beautiful. Um, wow, yeah, flying free like the dove. Gorgeous. Freedom, that's what you know, this is about. Yeah. yeah, I know as a child, I question and I write about this in the book, I questioned why pollution was okay. Why was rape okay? Why did wars happen? You know, and I mean, and nobody had an answer for me. And I've really been challenged by that my whole life, asking why, why, why is it okay? Why do we need legislation to tell us to take care of this planet. And, you know, so much of my journey has been about fear and facing fear and taking my power back from fear. And I think that's one of the reasons why the book is so timely right now, because we're waking up, you know, en masse to why do we live the way we live? No pun intended, unmasked, right? I mean, this is um, this is definitely a timeline where fear, it, it's so easy to get swept away by the energy of fear, false evidence appearing real. Yes. Would you like to, um, I feel like this might be an appropriate moment. It feels really light and expansive to maybe take people through a little mini journey into what it would look and feel like to live without fear on a planet <laughs> that didn't have pollution, that didn't have wars, that didn't have racism or rape or injustice or inequality, where it was just a peaceful planet where we could all reunite again as one, one species. Um, maybe just a little uh, sort of three minutes journey into what that would look and feel like if that was the reality and if we did live in this true land this pure land of tranquility as the buddhists say that this actually is where we are but all of this other these other images are the are um, distracting us from the truth of our pure buddha nature our true nature so if that's okay with you, we can, we can maybe just kind of go inside for a minute and ground everybody back into their bodies, but also expand people yeah. into this greater reality that is actually what is the truth, the truthful reality. Mm -hmm. That'd be great. So I'd like to invite you 
to gently close your eyes and connect to your breath. And just notice the air as it moves in and out. And notice that it's equally important to inhale as it is to exhale. It's equally important to give and receive. Imagine that you're dropping a cord of energy down from your root chakra into the center of Mother Earth, sending a root of light down into the mother to embrace her heart. And sending a stream of light from your crown up into the center of the cosmos. Connected above, grounded below. Allow your three-dimensional physical reality to be bathed in the essence of eternity and infinity. Can you imagine a world without fear? Where when you woke up in the morning, there was no worry or concern. That you could feel deeply into the essence of your heart and your soul. and allow your actions to be guided from that deep place of truth. And imagine as you go out into the world, the people that you meet are also deeply connected into their hearts and their souls. that each being could feel safe, valid, and worthy. That we could each create without blockage, without fear of judgment, knowing that we each have a unique gift and unique aspects of the light and unique aspects of shadow and darkness. And that it was all accepted as part of the human experience. divine and human. Equally important, equally valid, coming together in this beautiful quantum soup that is our world. Imagine that you didn't need to have fear of illness, fear of judgment, 
that your actions were not guided and motivated by fear, but instead guided and inspired so that you could know the true expansion of who you are as a soul, as part of this cosmic adventure. Imagine you could express without fear that your creativity could expand and blossom into this world to touch others. That at the end of the day, as you return to your bed, you could know I walked on the earth today with love, and creativity, compassion, and gratitude. And now, as I return to my dream state, I bring all of that wonder of my physical life back into the expanded space of dream time. Breathing the wonder and the joy of such a world into your solar plexus. Allowing the light of that wonder and joy to expand into every cell in your body. Allowing those ripples of energy to expand into your aura, to bathe your body. To know that with each breath, you can expand that incredible vision out into the world. Allow that energy to fill the room that you're in. Can you imagine that it could expand beyond your home? filling your neighborhood with love, light, fearlessness, inspiration, joy, connection, wholeness. And imagine you could send those waves even further and further filling the whole country, the entire continent, crossing the oceans and surrounding the entire planet, with this beautiful energy. And with your breath, Allow that to go even further out to the stars, the planets, filling the galaxy and beyond. Knowing that as you send this energy out, you're not only affecting your physical body, your emotional and mental body, your spiritual body, but you're touching all of creation. Do 
Take a deep breath. And let it go. And let yourself sink deeply into the truth that this is life and it is what we can create if we so choose. We're that powerful. You are that powerful. And when you're ready, gently open your eyes and come back. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Susan. That was quite nourishing, nurturing, and yummy. <laughs> Almost fell asleep there, and, I, and John Lennon came through for a minute with his Imagine song, and it was like, I just wanted to burst into the lyrics of imagine all the people yeah. living for today. You know, wouldn't that be uh, the way that we're Ooh. actually being asked to step into and embody and experience? Susan, before we say goodbye, I know that you have a very generous, um, a beautiful free gift. Um, would you like to share what that is and how people can access it? Yes. The, there's two parts to the gift. The first part is an article entitled Seven Magical Life Principles to Awaken Your Light. And... It's a really lovely article just going through seven perspectives and approaches to really embrace yourself as a soul, as a five dim fifth dimensional being and beyond, and how to bring that into your everyday life and manage it and bring those different aspects of who we are together. Um, so that is available on my website, uh, uh, magicallifeinstitute.com. And it's right on the homepage. Um, there's my face and there's the gift offer. <laughs> so it's kind of, uh, we can kind of get which is which. <laughs> yes. And... And then the other part of the gift is a complimentary 30-minute um, consultation with me. Um, no obligation to anything if you'd just like to connect and have a chat, learn more about what I do. And that is on the contact page on my website, um, magicallifeinstitute.com forward slash contact. And... Um, you can also order the book directly from the website if you're interested in that. Um, it's on Amazon. And, yeah. And wow. And say the name of the book once again, in case somebody fell asleep and is now coming back <laughs> to life after that lovely meditation. Um, it's called Awakenings, Stories of Healing, Growth, and Magical Transformations. Beautiful. Wow. I just want to thank you once again for being on the show, on the New Earth Ascension Show, on the New Earth One Network. And it's so good to know that you're on the planet and, and that, you know, you're, the essence of your presence can be felt in an even uh, more meaningful global uh, way so that people know that they're not alone and that you know, you're not crazy, uh, that, you know, it's okay to be different and to just be yourself. And that that is the new truth timeline that we're living on, where we can actually always trust our intuitive guidance system, which is right inside our very own heart space. So yes, thank you so much for being here, Susan. Thank you so much for having me, Vandana.
And if anyone would like to reach me and stay connected, stay in touch, you can find me on vanzanolifehealing.com. Subscribe to my newsletters, to my weekly transmissions, classes, training programs, and also sessions. I'd love to meet with all of you. And you'll also receive a free gift, vanzanolifehealing.com. Thank you so much for being with me. Thank you, everyone, for tuning in today and for being here. We really appreciate your presence, your gifts, and your magic. Have a beautiful day, and we'll see you next time. Namaste. Thank you. Thank you.